That's right, time and space are like a fabric, uh, like rubber, like a trampoline net. However, if you stretch the trampoline net so much, it can rip, perhaps. Imagine a universe where humanity reigns supreme, wielding the power of stars and bending the fabric of space-time to our will. Scientists have recently discovered the force that would enable our civilization to rise to such galactic dominance. Interestingly, this force that distorts the fabric of space-time was discovered long ago by Isaac Newton and developed by renowned theoretical physicist and scientific genius Albert Einstein. This secret is gravity. As described in Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity not only acts on Earth, but also controls the way planets move around stars and how we perceive space and time. What cosmic challenges do we need to overcome to achieve this galactic relevance? How can we break the space-time continuum and travel between galaxies in split seconds? How far are we as a civilization from intergalactic travel? And how does gravity act as a gatekeeper to these new frontiers? Join us as we explore the mysterious force that scientists have discovered to be able to break the space-time continuum. Take a minute, close your eyes and imagine a world where humans have attained the most advanced civilization in history and can control the worlds beyond our solar system. A time when we hold the most impactful energy source on a galactic scale and can channel the power of billions of stars to suit our needs. In 1964, Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev divided civilizations into three based on energy use. His categorization was inspired by radio broadcasts leaked into space from faraway planets like ours. Some believe that Kardashev must have found a way to communicate with other species because his categorization could only have come from an outer mind. Type 1 civilizations harness all the energies of the home world, while Type 2 can capture the full radiant energy of their parent star and Type 3, typically called the Galactic Civilization, controls the energy on the scale of its entire galaxy. It would be no surprise that humans are still stuck in Type 1, planetary civilization. In fact, we have yet to fully realize these milestones as we're still at the initial stage of utilizing renewable energy and other energy sources. To truly become a stellar civilization, it would be able to build a Dyson sphere around the sun to harness its full energy capacities. Or we could use a swarm of solar panels. In a Type 2 civilization, you can wake up on Earth, have lunch on a space station with a great view of Mars, and then have an evening meeting on Callisto, one of Jupiter's Jovian moons. This is just an imagination for us on Earth, as we have to expend billions in research, money and energy to keep the International Space Station working. What separates the planetary, stellar and galactic civilizations is the amount of energy they can control and manipulate. While planetary civilizations require crude oil and coal, galactic civilizations may involve star lifting, antimatter generation and tapping into black holes. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear humans would come close to harnessing the power of a billion suns in millennia, but we could grasp the power of our sun. We would need to understand gravity and how it works to do that. Although we have yet to fully understand how gravity works, its impact on our lives on and off the planet cannot be downplayed. The invisible force that keeps objects on Earth also keeps the planets in orbit around the Sun. It is one of the most fundamental forces in the universe, shaping the cosmos and how we move around in it. While many credit Sir Isaac Newton for the discovery of gravity, ancient Greek philosophers explored the concept of gravity. For example, Aristotle proposed that objects fall towards the Earth because it is their natural place. However, in 1687, Sir Isaac Newton's groundbreaking work on the law of universal gravitation laid the foundation for modern physics and our understanding of gravity. Taken over a few centuries ago by Albert Einstein, Newton's laws developed into Einstein's theory of general relativity. With this law, 
Einstein introduced the concept of space-time curvature, where the presence of mass and energy warps the fabric of space-time, which causes the objects to flow in curved paths, just like the planets do around the Sun. With this new theory, humans could deal better with outer space. Armed with this knowledge, NASA sent a man to the Moon. We also devised ways to use planets' gravity to propel spacecraft, like a gravitational slingshot. This trick was pivotal to the success of the Voyager projects in going to the farthest places in the solar system. In 1990, something unexplainable happened, proving that there might be more to our understanding of gravitation and calculations. The two spacecraft sent into space before the Voyager missions, Pioneer 10 and 11, were found to be slowing down as they reached the edge of our solar system, almost like something was holding them back and pulling them back towards the centre. Over two decades after these missions, scientists have proposed different reasons for this phenomenon. Some believe it was a gas leak, while others believe that this may be due to dark space matter. However, the gravitational force appears deeper at the solar system's edge than it is towards the center. This new discovery further deepened our understanding of the cosmos and showed that we don't know as much as we should. Even with powerful computers, NASA can still not solve the three body problems. The enigma has confounded even the smartest minds. Imagine two celestial bodies like the Sun and Earth one can easily predict their orbital paths without much difficulty using Newton's and Kepler's gravitational formulas. However, add a third body, such as the Moon, into the mix and everything changes. The three cosmic bodies change direction, tugging at each other and constantly shifting the equation. Pinpointing their exact trajectories becomes almost impossible. All our known concepts and calculations fall flat in the face of this celestial juggling act. While scientists continue to grapple with the uncertainty of this phenomenon, the small errors in these calculations continue to compound until prediction becomes hopeless. You may wonder why anyone would care about predicting the complex orbits of three celestial bodies. This may seem like an exercise in futility, even for astrologers. However, this conundrum has significant implications far beyond our solar systems. These implications may be the key to our transition from a planetary civilization to a Type 3 galactic civilization. You see, the solar system itself has not just three bodies, but dozens of flinging planets and asteroids in a cosmic ballet around the Sun. And our Milky Way galaxy spins countless stars in its gravitational pirouette. 3 is just the start of the cosmic uncertainty. For centuries, the three-body problem has stood as a symbol of the limits of science itself. It taunts us that no matter how advanced our equations, we will never fully grasp the clockwork of the cosmos. There will always be uncertainty and mystery in the mechanics of the spheres. But does this mean the problem cannot be solved? In the late 19th century, a French mathematician named Poincaré sought to find order lurking within the three-body chaos. Though he could not obtain precise solutions, he discovered a web of pathways along which three-body systems may drift. Like mountain streams descending from a peak, each body carves its course through space but is guided by specific channels. A century later, chaos theory illuminated these strange attractors and fractal patterns hiding in orbit simulations. The watchword is the sensitive dependence on the initial conditions of the starting data, and you may yet glimpse the order behind the randomness. Today, computer simulations crunching astronomical datasets reveal more secrets of the three-body riddle. The dance of stars across our galaxy can now be seen as rivers of order and structure within the probabilistic pandemonium. Without solving some of these key problems, we may remain stuck as a Type 1 civilization. Without accurate predictions, we cannot place interplanetary objects like the Dyson Sphere in space. In 2002, NASA engineer Martin Lowe developed a radical new method of solar system navigation that forgoes brute rocket thrust and uses invisible celestial gravitational superhighways. This method would allow us to travel through the solar system at a fraction of the cost, saving time and fuel. 
the Voyager projects utilized this concept to propel themselves in a cosmic slingshot effect. We realized that we could develop an interplanetary map by stinging flybys together and visualizing the network. However, we know that locating these gilded galactic roads is no easy feat. The complex network looks more like an overpass spaghetti junction than a highway system. Just like earthbound roads, the conditions change. The gravitational tides shift and many other factors come into play before we can optimally utilize this pathway. Lowe devised a gravitational GPS to chart the ever-changing interplanetary superhighway by sifting order from chaos and searching for harmonic strands. Just as a road atlas guides terrestrial travelers, this celestial map illuminates the swiftest lanes through interplanetary space. If we can crack this nut, calculations show that trips to Jupiter could be shortened by years and voyages to Pluto three times faster. This shrinks the trip from three years to 95 days. It is now self-evident that only when we master the way gravity works can we navigate through the space-time continuum. As a member of the Type 3 civilization, you can go on vacation to any paradise planet and post on the intergalactic internet. While we have a basic understanding of the intergalactic gravity phenomena, we are still stuck with new paradoxes that may take years to unravel. Bright minds such as Erwin Schrödinger, Paul Dürer and Robert Oppenheimer spent decades trying to combine Einstein's perception of gravity and quantum mechanics, but ran into multiple dead ends. After going into hiding for a few years, in 1935, Einstein emerged with his new theory of quantum entanglement. This inexplicable phenomenon shows that if you alter the spin of an electron on Earth, its entangled opposite instantly spins to match wherever it is in the universe. In other words, if you place two interconnected particles far away, they will mirror themselves, and whatever you do to one will reflect on the other almost instantaneously. Multiple experiments have proven that this theory works, which could mean that communication can be achieved in an instant. While testing this theory to its limits, scientists found another infinity around a mysterious object, a black hole. Again, Einstein returned to rescue the world by showing that two connected black holes could form a wormhole, making transportation through great distances possible. In 2013, physicists Leonard Susskind and Juan Maldacena came to a breakthrough conclusion stating that the nature of wormholes may not be any different from the theory of quantum entanglement. In both places, the unknown gravitational effect acts as a connection provider. In 2022, a research team used the Sycamore quantum processor to carry out old experiments in this field. They tested Susskind and Muldesena's theory. After years of research, they could simulate an advanced version of a wormhole and successfully pass an object through it without destroying it. Their findings were groundbreaking. It shows that wormholes would play a huge part in transportation for Type 3 civilizations to move around the galaxy. However, the existence of a wormhole has not been confirmed, and neither do we know how possible it would be to send objects through this medium but this might be our doorway into the interplanetary highway. Scientists have further advanced Kardashev's theory of civilizations by developing a Type IV civilization. It can do more after a civilization has mastered the principles of traveling through wormholes without any issues and has mapped out the galaxies. A Type IV civilization could look back to watch the Big Bang or forward in time to see the end of the universe. This is because they would have mastered the power of the time-space continuum and could wield it however they choose. This can only be achieved with a high level of understanding of the nature of gravity. The first sign that a civilization has mastered gravity would be a highly detailed map of the universe. Humans have yet to fully map the galaxies around us as we use a combination of spacecraft and telescopes to gaze into the stars beyond us. When compared to the speed of space, the speed of light is too low to track galaxies and stars. However, in 2022, scientists at Johns Hopkins University presented a 3D map of a broad segment of the night sky. 
This map shows over 200,000 galaxies and the sophistication of our current technological capabilities. This is super impressive, but we are still scratching the surface. The map of the universe would measure the spatial features and temporal quantities. The further a galaxy is, the older it tends to be, and we see galaxies that have existed for billions of years. Additionally, our universe is expanding exponentially. Hence, even if we find a wormhole that takes us farther than our eyes can see, it would still be nearly impossible to decipher where we are. This means that to have a true map of the universe, we would need to look as far back into the past as possible. We should get as close to the Big Bang as possible, as this would give us a better understanding of the universe around us. To do that, you guessed it, we need to understand gravity. In 2002, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, set out to find what no one had ever found before gravitational waves. In 2002, this facility began the Herculean task of finding what Einstein had written much about. Einstein predicted that any interacting object with mass would produce barely visible ripples in the space-time fabric spreading around the universe. It took LIGO 13 years to detect this incredible phenomenon. They finally found it on September 14, 2015, after two massive black holes collided. This was a groundbreaking discovery, and since then, LIGO has detected dozens of similar ripples following collisions of the same magnitude. These ripples are invisible to regular telescopes because gravitational ripples can go through any medium in space, including the gravitational wave background. The whole universe is filled with gravitational waves, which keep the memory of every interaction in space going back to the Big Bang. In collaboration with the European Space Agency, NASA is developing the LISA space mission, which would be able to observe the elusive gravitational wave background. If we can successfully achieve this, we will be able to create the most accurate chronological map of the universe. With this information, our future Type IV civilization would be guaranteed never to get lost in the cosmos, no matter what medium they choose to travel through. HD1 is one of the most remote galaxies ever photographed by the James Webb Telescope. Astronomers estimate that this galaxy is more than 33.3 billion light years away. This means that we may never be able to visit it because the universe extends exponentially. By the time we can create the technology to travel through wormholes, HD1 would have already drifted out of the visible sphere of the universe. The only way to achieve this is to create a gravity-based time machine. Einstein claims that black holes severely warp the space around them and time. He stated that time would become warped into a loop, connecting a black hole with its past. This means you can travel to any time in the history of the world, even travelling back billions of years. Imagine a spaceship from a Type III civilization going through a black hole, traveling back to colonize planets before the universe began expanding. Maybe when we look at the HD1 galaxy, we are looking at a galaxy already occupied by our distant descendants. However, why stop at one universe when you can have more? This leads us to the possibility of a Type V civilization. A Type V civilization would make our current civilization look like a Stone Age as they begin tampering with gravity and the multiverse. This civilization would see the cosmos as their playground, surfing between realities and dimensions like they were going from Kansas to California. This civilization is so advanced that it wields powers that are only reserved for the gods. It travels through space and the fabric of the multiverse itself, by grasping quantum gravity, these civilizations are not limited by the unbreakable realities of the speed of light. Rather, they can create wormholes on demand, warping travel times and shifting the Higgs fields to alter the very mass of objects. The Sun provides all the energy our Type I civilization could ever need. However, the Type V civilization could throw parties across entire galaxies using the sun as a glowing nightlight. 
a mastery of technologies like the zero-point modules can harness unlimited power by accessing quantum fluctuations in space-time itself. Even if our universe runs dry, they can simply shift to another, exploring the cosmic breaches of the quantum wave function. Type 5 civilizations don't float spaceships through space. They maneuver and enter solar systems through reality using gravitational thrusters. Wormholes would be like subway tunnels between universes, and black holes would serve as portal hubs, granting access to places and times unimaginable. As beings of pure energy unbound by the limitations of the laws of physics, Type 5 civilizations can be described as immortal. This is a choice that they would have as they surpass universal cycles of creation and entropy with their mastery of gravitational power. Others can choose to reset their lives, choosing cosmic rebirth by scattering fragments of their lives among lesser beings until they choose to be reborn again. While most scientists see our world as 3D, genius mathematician Edward Witten's M-theory begs to differ. It sees our universe as a floating bubble in an ocean of 11 dimensions. This theory unites relativity and quantum mechanics, two great pillars of physics. The theory states that particles like electrons and photons are not dots like billiard balls but tiny vibrating strings spinning in complex dances within unseen dimensions. This may explain why we see points like particles with mass and charge, as the strings are too small to glimpse, but their vibrations reverberate in our 3D world, like seeing guitar strings blur as they strum. Although this theory sounds unrealistic, the mathematics works perfectly with 11 dimensions. Gravity in this multi-layer is very weak, as it has to break through seven new dimensions before breaking into our reality. There is currently no way to test this theory to understand how these dimensions work together. The Type 5 civilization may discover a way to prove this theory and may even discover new dimensions to it that we cannot fathom. Until then, cosmologists have been stuck figuring out where 85% of the universe's mass is. All we know is that our understanding of energy, gravity and time remains in its infancy compared to future civilization's possibilities. Today, it has been helpful in technological advancement and space exploration. However, there is more to learn and many more galaxies to visit. If we cannot do that in our generation, we have begun laying the foundations for future civilizations to do this without stress. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen for more quality content.